Does a chill in the weather get you down? Are you ready to grow all winter long? Well, we are going to talk about building indoor greenhouses and indoor cold frames to help you keep your season going longer and your seed starting experience to start earlier. Only on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening. As we learn to grow and grow for change. That was magical. I know. I felt like everything I want to know about (laughs) indoor (laughs) greenhouses and cold frames is going to be answered on this show. It better be or else we are screwed. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping you're listening to you because this is all you, Patna. No, it's for you. I know. This is a lot of pressure on you. You ain't sitting there watching TV, are you, now that you got that brand new update? No, I uh, I am trying to log in, though, and this is going to be a catastrophe because now I have to remember the password to get into this, and it's like, you know, just throw it all away. Well, you have a bad habit of resetting passwords, so uh, just take it easy on all it. All the time. Or no, time. locking them out, locking people out. All the time. I had this yeah. post from years ago, like, it's amazing that I can actually remember 20 different passwords like that is a sign that I'm aging well and by remember I mean having them listed in a secret spot on my cell phone so yeah here we go it's all kinds of security violations right there (laughs) yeah so all I need to do is get your cell phone then I can dig and find it there it is but you have to get the password for the cell phone to start with and that is like breaking into NASA I know the password yeah you may know it it (laughs) I can crack it you may Right. Batavia is number one. That's the answer. No, it could, but it may be number one Batavia. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only mm-hmm, Batavia. Mm-hmm. The one and only. Well, I got the greenhouse up. Yeah! Wait. It took three days, two people, and a lot of digging. Mm-hmm. But we got it. So, yeah. So I saw the frame like the that's basically it's, you, would you consider it a frame. And if you guys want to t- take a look at it, you can go to, to you know the back gar- backyard gardener on Instagram. He has some pictures on it. Um, so is that a frame or is that the bed, the raised bed or is it really both? That's the frame. That's the foundation mm-hmm. that we made. OK. OK. So. That was the hard part because if you don't have a foundation, then it's you don't have a warranty. It blows mm-hmm. away. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the thing only weighs like eighty pounds when oh, it's all okay. built, so you That's have to like, put something to weight it down. That's it's nothing. Like half of a Batavia or something. Yeah. No, that's yeah, actually so. no. That's not. That's way less than half of a Batavia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Anyway, let's move it along. Let's 20 not years ago, talk 20 about years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two drive, three, five drivers license pictures ago. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But um, yeah. So you know, it's been up and functional for four days, five days now, maybe. And you guys it really have to, been looking. Did you have to do go any ahead. concrete pouring or anything? Or no. Okay. So I did not do concrete pouring because I want to grow in ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I don't. You, I mean, you know me. I'm not big into container gardening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it just it made sense because, like, yeah, you can grow in containers, but if you're worried about temperature, then you've got to warm the pots because they're elevated mm-hmm. outside of the ground and they mm-hmm. lose like all that insulation. Yeah. So my dad, you know, my dad came to help me. <laughs> moment of silence for my nerves <laughs> that's not a moment and, of silence uh, but <laughs> no but uh he came down and he, he uh we, we start building it and you know my sand is, my soil is real sandy mm-hmm. so i got some soil conditioner like a couple bags of that and just put it on top okay and um i was gonna get some compost and put on that and he's sitting there he's like 
well, you need to put more you need to put more dirt in there and i was like yeah, okay he's like no 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 i mean he's like it's gonna compress down and you're not gonna really have anything in there and i'm like the next stop is the mantle of the earth there is three miles of dirt underneath we are not going to run out you know what i yeah, mean it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. Yes, this isn't making sense what you're saying. Like I, I'm picking up what he's trying to say, yeah, yeah. but it, I was like, no. And he's like, well, you. I, I mean, literally, like for two days straight, you need to get more dirt put in there. You need to get more dirt. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> you drive me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. So daytime temperatures as of right now are about 20 degrees warmer than outside. Nighttime temperatures is the ultimate question. Mm-hmm, though. Mm-hmm. And what are the nighttime temperatures? Oh, how nice of you to ask. Uh, no problem at all. S- so far, roughly five degrees with no insulation, nothing added to it. Just which, you know, five degrees is a lot. Well, you know, so five degrees is literally the difference between freezing and not, you know? Yeah. And in my area, I mean, that puts me into January mm-hmm. before I would really get like a hard freeze in there. Mm-hmm. And then if I add other stuff to it, which we'll go into it later, then that will help as well. Yeah. So, right. you know, it's interesting. Yeah. But, um, there was some actual freezing temps. Um, I was watching the weather yesterday or the day before in Aurora, Illinois, which is a ways from me. But I mean, you're still talking about the state of Illinois, like, you know, 29 degrees. Like, what in the what? Where is that north of you? Yeah. Yeah. Or south of me. Yeah. It's not east of me. Who knows? That north or south. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> well, clearly like 30 degrees is the difference. No, actually our nights have been getting into the 40s. I've seen some damage on a couple of bell pepper plants. Like, yeah. you know, leaves curling like, yeah, get these, get this fruit off of me. I'm done for the season. <laughs> yeah, my bell pepper, we haven't gotten that cold, but my bell pepper plants have just kind of stopped Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is fine well you know interestingly enough it's the one plant that my neighbor gave to me and that plant was bought at a big box store so all of the plants that i loved on all spring they're the uh, pepper plants they're still kicking out stuff you know and by that Mm -hmm. i mean like they're not dying yeah and oh the other thing is humidity at night is an issue oh yeah 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 yeah. 100 percent every night 100 percent Cause it's, so, I mean, it's like a little box of hail, right? You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's gets, you know, it was 75 yesterday. It was a hundred degrees in there. Mm-hmm. So then you shut it at night to try and hold the heat. Cause you know, I'm just right now, like my expectations are very low yeah. because I'm just trying to figure this out. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to shut it and see how much of that warmth stays in. And by the time, you know, I shut it at like seven o'clock at night, maybe by the time I went to bed a couple hours later, it was 100% humidity in there. Mm. But when you open it up, it goes away. Yeah. You know, it drops. So I'm not, I don't know if it's bad if it's like only at night, but I think it would be bad if it was like all, all the time. Day, all day long. Yeah. I've been, all um, day long. I bought one of those um, thermometers. Is that, yeah, inside, outside. So I wanted to measure temperature and humidity. And so I yeah. placed it in various spots. You know, obviously the I placed it in the bathroom, but the bathroom would be too damp because you know where I'm headed to when it comes to you know why I'm checking this out. Had it in mm-hmm. the garage. Um, I I tried the basement by the furnace. The furnace isn't on yet though. Well, one day I did give in because you damn it, I work every day. I'm not gonna be cold in this house. Um, and then I settled on an upstairs uh, bedroom closet, and um, you know. When it was warmer, I was getting up to 60. I mean, I'm getting nowhere near 85 degree or 85 um, percent humidity. Um, so it is what it is. Like my temperature indoors is something like 70 ish. Humidifier. Oh, yeah. I keep on forgetting about that. Yeah. Get a cool mist humidifier. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I know where one is. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Check a you closet. Already got it check a, um, a garage. Check under a porch. Yeah it's somewhere yeah i'm sure yeah but and and you know the reason why i bring it up well first of all because it's a really big deal in my life but also because that's kind of what we're talking about well you know? it kind of feels like an hour life though like it's isn't it kind of like our greenhouse no 
Yeah, I mean, is. I didn't pay I anything think... for it. I didn't put any you work into. Section. I didn't put any work into it, uh, into building it. I didn't give any opinions on how much dirt you needed. However, these are our experiences. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. Mm-hmm. It's funny you bring this up because I've been I've I've put a lot of thought into this situation. Okay, and I've decided something. Okay, mm-hmm. so if I grow, okay, so my plan is to start tomatoes in there early in the ground because it gets so warm. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I can maybe squeeze out an early crop of tomatoes Mm -hmm. inside before it just gets too hot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but if you you talk about cabbage and you talk about, you know, tomatoes, what is the big difference in, you know, how they produce? Like, what do they, what do you think they need, one needs that the other one doesn't? Um, oh, pollinators. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. So what's the problem with the greenhouse? Well, in most cases, you're going to have the door closed and all of those right. pollinators are going to be like with their hands on the glass saying we want in. Right. So and actually the door needs to be open during the day, but there's not that much space for them to get in. Right. Well, are you cracking it or are you leaving it wide open? It's wide open, as wide as it'll go. Yeah, there's plenty but of still, space, but do they... Yeah, it'll be fine. Think about in your garden, though. Mm-hmm. You can have a pollinator come from any direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to come in this one area. Oh, I got like what you're saying, yeah. like a little super highway for pollinators, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So, what do you do? Well, you plant flowers on the outside of the greenhouse. Do you also put a sign saying pollinators stop here? Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh-huh. You for sure do. Uh-huh. So I've been thinking, I've put a lot of thought into this, mm-hmm. you know, and my flower brain is immature mm, and no, it's ignorant. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just don't know a lot. I'm ignorant that part about of it. your brain among others, but go on. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> that's how the show starts out, everybody. Yeah, I was turning so it over I've, in my head, which... A, I was going in for that joke, but I was turning it over my head, like which angle, but go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty pleased with it. So on one side, so the door opens up and it blocks one side completely. It opens outward or inward? Outward. Okay. So one side you can't put anything, Mm -hmm. but then the next side you can put something, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And then you go around one side, you know, the sun generally comes in on on the south side, you know, because it's facing southeast dish. I believe. So what we want to do is I want to put a, a low plants on one side where the sun comes in so the sun can still come into the greenhouse. On the outside on the, of the greenhouse. On yeah, the outside okay. of the greenhouse. Mm-hmm. And then on the opposite side, I want to put taller plants, correct? Flowers and stuff like that. Because the sun, it won't be blocking any sun. Okay. On the you side where saying? the door opens out on that side? No, just the just the long side of it where the, the sun's not going to really oh, gotcha. yeah, bother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to create any shade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But since I'm immature mm-hmm. and ignorant about flowers, I've decided that I want Batavia and our listeners to design it for me. Oh. And I will put whatever on the outside that you, Batavia, mm-hmm. and the listeners tell us is what I will plant. Oh. So... I'm going to do it. I'm curious to see what we, I might have the craziest looking shit I've ever had in my life, or it could be the most beautiful thing ever. Yeah. Or somewhere in between. Um, so remember when we, it's crazy. I hope it's crazy. When we first, we first announced the greenhouse, the episode was named dreams come true. And I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just, it continues to give. (laughs) <laughs> this is one more facet of the things I dream. So when I got up off of the couch and got into the bed at 1 a.m. this morning, this was actually what I didn't know this, but my spirit said tomorrow there will be goodness for you. There is. It, it was there I is. was able to get to sleep knowing that. And then here it is. It plays out. Yeah. And the only requirements I have. Uh, d- d- nope, nope. We're done. No, no. Closing I have to the say subject. <laughs> nope. I have to say it because I still have to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Is I need perennials and lower maintenance. Okay. That's reasonable. And that's already yeah. removed three of my requests. But go on. All right. I mean, what were your three requests? No, it was only one. And it was going to be what? it was going to be sunflowers. And I knew you were going to hate it. And not the mammoth sunflowers. I knew you were going to yeah. hate it. But I love it. I can see it. You know, I'm, I don't hate sunflowers by any means. I don't 
want to stake them mm-hmm, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if, if there's like a low growing variety of sunflower or something, I would rather have that even in my like regular yard. Mm-hmm. I think so, but yeah. That's so the seeds for so low um, growing, like two feet. Yeah. I mean, for some flowers, so, that's low growing. So it, and it's, and then on the glorious day when we finally meet in person, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring your own shovel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always travel. You ain't with using one. my shit. Get your yeah, own shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's Good uh, times. you know, I think it'll be fun though. Mm-hmm. You know, to have you know, I'd let other people kind of play with it and stuff like that, yeah. and we'll see what happens. So, yeah, it's literally you know. now it's a community greenhouse. It is. Yeah. It is. I like it. I like it a so, lot. And you guys don't have to pay for it. I'll pay for it mm-hmm. just to be f- yeah, out crystal there, clear. So. Yeah, <laughs> you don't although have to send I may me send tw- you some seeds though, because I mean, oh well, if you want to send me seeds, I would much rather that. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah I have some stuff. Oh, I was collecting I completely unrelated. I was collecting um, um, hibiscus seeds. I have to research it. Really? Yeah. So my. All of my hibiscus this year, which I want to say it's my number one favorite flower. I'm so close to saying it, but I don't want to. It is. I don't want to cheat on my others. Um, and you know, it's kind of like your favorite. I I can tell. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of like you know, is she gonna ask him to marry her? Like this is we've been dating for years and years. It's like, are you going to sh- or get off the pot, right? So anyway, it's definitely in my top three. I'll leave it at that way. So these are all perennials, second year of growing perennial hibiscus. And so I was out, you know, just doing a little bit of maintenance in the flower bed. And I'm like, wait, is that what I think it is? I mean, once you start, and this is all new to me, once you start looking and identifying seeds, it becomes really obvious what a lot of seeds, what some seeds are for plants, right? And right. so then I'm just like, huh, clearly everything you grow that you've purchased somewhere, someone else grew it, right? It's not like they just went it out in nature, dug this up and put it in a, a nursery pot to sell. And so then I did a quick search on the interweb about, you know, kind of starting hibiscus for seeds and people do it. So I'm just, I'm going to look up probably between this week and this weekend, like the growth time. Should I be starting mm-hmm. seeds in November, you know, December or what have you? Um, and I, gosh, I mean, I'm losing space for where I would plant them. But, you know, how I am with this, this particular Make flower. Space. Clearly, if, if space. I when I grow them. You're going to see like a banded hibiscus planter. You're going to read about it in Chicago's news. Well, you know, you're going to need a greenhouse to grow it inside. Mm-hmm. Well. Segway. You like that, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. We we're talking about greenhouses. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, first of all, so let's be straight up about what a greenhouse is. Mm-hmm. OK, so I technically have a greenhouse. But in all reality, as it stands now, it's considered a cold frame because the temperatures at night cool down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So, in order for it to technically be a greenhouse, it would need to be warmer at night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but and we can get you know I am I'm researched up to my eyeballs on that for outdoors, but we're just going to focus on. What a lot of people can do inside, like in your garage or yeah, something. Okay. Yeah. And I've done this for years. I did this for years. And um, it's just building a little box for a greenhouse inside and keeping it inside your house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And it's cheap. It's easy. Mm-hmm. And you can start seeds in there, depending on how big you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you have to ask yourself, though, like, like, so we were talking about it briefly and you were talk, thinking like putting it out in your garage. Mm hmm. Right. That's correct. So if you're going to heat that space, you don't want a huge giant space to heat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So then that goes into determining your size. So like, what would you want to plant in something like that? Obviously, I think we might be talking about hibiscus of some sort, right? Yeah. I think that um, probably your lower maintenance um, seed starts because there's some seed starts that and probably once they get to a size that they need less like I would love not to have to check on them every day Um, so something like hibiscus 
I don't know if they meet those requirements, but because I won't plant all of the seeds that I've collected because there's a ton of seeds on the plants. It's such a beautiful thing, which, you know, I won't even get into the idea of collecting seeds from vegetables and flowers and all because I'll just get all weepy and emotional. Um, but I want to start a bunch because I know nothing about it. And if you see, mm-hmm. if you know anything about me, there's a pattern, right? I, I go big because it's kind of like, well, I need a plan B, C, D, and E. So it's like 60 mm-hmm. hibiscus plants, you know? Um, so yeah, hibiscus would be something, um, you know, maybe some of the seed starts that um, have a, a shorter window, you know, so you're four weeks tomatoes, four or five weeks, you know, from seed to mm-hmm to um to heartening off um maybe cucumber plants you know so some of the summer vegetables as i get closer because by that time i'll be outdoors more as well yeah yeah so what i do is i would start stuff like eggplants that take like eight weeks oh and flowers that take like eight weeks because you got to start those way early so why would you start those outside instead of inside because I have this greenhouse set up for it, and it it creates more space. Wait, are we talking about your green official greenhouse? No, or no, my no. Indoor? We're, we are not talking about your. We're not talking about my greenhouse okay. that I have here at all anymore. Okay, we're talking about the one that we're going to talk about building. Okay, so that's what I would. I started in it. Mm-hmm. Is I would start your. You know, anything that took like a really long time to start that you had to get started like real early. You know, because and this, when I started using these, it was in January up in New England. You know, I had four months to go, mm-hmm. but some stuff like peppers mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it worked out great for because I had that extra space where I could put them down there and they get the correct amount of heat and they would grow. But that's that's okay. goes back to my question, though. So why longer um, growing time veggies versus shorter that's the way I decided to do okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, that's just when I when I was looking at it, I was like, you know, we have to start this early mm-hmm. if I'm going to do this and I have to heat it because it was the first time I used it. I lived in a house and we had um, we had baseboard heating, electric heat, mm-hmm. and we would keep our house at 50 degrees temperature inside and our power bill is $400 a month. Wow. It was awful. Wow. So there was really no way to start some of these things that we wanted to. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, created this thing that would, you know, hold the heat in, give it light in a compact area because it was a small apartment. And I had, so like my, I had like a two bedroom apartment, but then below it, inside there was a whole unheated space that was the exact same size as my apartment it was just one giant room mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i put this thing in there and just left it on the you know left it down there and i mean things grew i mean i had tropical plants growing in there oh wow you know i was rooting like jade plants and mm-hmm. stuff like that and they're real temperature sensitive mm-hmm. they didn't die interesting so you know and it was i think i had a thermometer down there and it's about 40 degrees outside of it and we kept it at like 60 to 70 inside Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know and the power bill i mean it was already 400 dollars. i think it maybe went up to like four or two or something you know it wasn't much so um but you know when you're thinking about doing like are you gonna build like a six foot by eight foot by seven foot high greenhouse for this probably not not in your house right no 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 that's not the plan no. So what I did is I went and I got one by fours mm-hmm. or no, excuse me, one by ones. You know what that is? Yes. I got a whole bunch of those mm-hmm. and I made a, a rectangle and then I just started screwing in supports going up as real crude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I made another top rectangle mm-hmm. and put that. And so that was like your main frame. Okay. And then I went and I got pallets. And I put pallets in the bottom, like I'd cut them and put the pallets in the bottom, you know, because I think my final dimensions of it were like three feet, no, two feet by f- maybe four feet, okay. something, you know, it was small. Okay. And then um, I put pallets inside and underneath I put like a thick plastic coating the outside of it and I use a staple gun and I stapled it onto it. So like real thick plastic. On the, at the ground On level. The, on the ground uh-huh, level, but uh-huh. bumps into the, so water would not leak through, right? Because yeah. you want to, yeah, yeah, you want to do this, and then I would take, um, you know that, um, 
window plastic you put up on your windows to, in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. That's what I ended up wrapping the outside of it with. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh, so then uh-huh. I would put a sheet of that all the way around. And then I would build another rectangle and put it on top for a lid. And then I put hinges on it. And then I put a handle on the outside. And then I put the plastic on that. So then I could open it and get in there and do stuff, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then inside, what I would do is I put, um, I got a real small space, the smallest space heater you can find that is um, thermostat controlled and tip over. So if like it tipped over, it would cut off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I think I spent like 10 bucks on it. Okay, okay. And then you just cut like a little hole in the plastic for that to go out for the, the electrical cord. Mm-hmm. And then I got uh, grow lights. And on the edges, I just put the grow lights right on the edges on that frame. And then you have a greenhouse on the inside. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And I am trying to control my emotions around it as I go through my inventory of um, spare things that I have. I'm like, check. You know, one by ones or something close to it. Check for my scrap yeah. you know, wood at, at Lowe's. Um, I I have shelving units, like a sh- uh, one of those like five tier, five shelf shelving units, but you, you can configure it whatever way you want. So it's out mm-hmm. there now. And I think it's probably hip high. So maybe it goes like, I don't know, I'm terrible at measurements, like maybe three feet, four feet high or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and... I have grow lights that I'm prepared to hang from there, right? So I'm feeling like, oh, I'm part of the way there. And so right. what I was I was thinking about a plastic. And when you talk about crude, like I was thinking about kind of draping and pinning plastic. It didn't even occur yeah. to me to build a box, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm not so I mean, sure look- how I feel about the space heater part. Um, it's crucial. You have to have yeah, it. Yeah. Well, so the place that I wanted to go with this was not so much for uh, seat starts in the dead of winter, but more so for, especially for my containers, some of these hardy ish vegetables that I've actually already started that's that are growing. So instead of having to harvest all of my lettuce, you know, and when this, this airs, it's going to be right around you know, my frost date, my expected first yeah. frost date. By the way, I looked up last year and it snowed on October 31st. So my expected frost oh. date is um, October 29th. So we clearly met that and it snowed a couple of days later. So anyway, um, it's my plan to say, OK, I'm going to move some of these things inside of the garage, supply them with some light you know, recognizing that the temperatures may not stay at freezing, at freezing, at freezing. Um, but yeah, I I like this a lot. Yeah, I think it's the so, I think the piece so about the space easy. heater is it's the which you know I'll likely be able to move the um, thermostat back into the garage to get a gauge of how cold or warm the garage really is. Ther- Thermometer. Thermometer. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if I move this, this kind of, you know, just sit it up next to the window thermometer back into the garage, um, that'll give me an idea of what those temps are. If it's 30 degrees outside, you know, what's that temperature now, you know? And, yeah. um, well, that's important to do too, because you definitely want to have an idea of what's going on. And I know you said your garage gets cold. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, one thing you can do too is, so, well, first of all, what don't you like about the space heater? I think there's just, just some general nervousness around the safety of it. And yeah. I, I know you've walked through the idea of like there are, you know, space heaters built to kind of keep yourself, keep you safe. It's the um, and I mean, I could have the same concern in my um, basement because it's so far away from where I kind of move about every day. But the garage right. is like completely. I, and I just said, I kind of don't want to go there in there every day if I don't have to. Um well, think about it this way. So I, I get where you're coming mm-hmm. from. And I was paranoid mm-hmm. when I first got it. But so what you want to do is, you know, safety is always mm-hmm. first. You don't want to burn your house down. You don't want to electrocute yourself is you want it elevated off of the bottom. So when the when, you, you know, I put everything on a pallet, but I didn't put the space heater on a pallet. I left a gap and then I would like put 
uh, blocks of wood underneath it mm-hmm. so that it wouldn't get, you know, the water from the pallet couldn't get onto the heater or something gotcha, like gotcha, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I left extra space. In, so there was like no plants within like eight inches of mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. you know, and um, we would put that in there. But if you have it and it's tip over, so if it tips over, it cuts mm-hmm. off. It's on a thermostat. Yeah. And you have it elevated. And if you had like a surge protector or something like that, you know, which most people do, yeah. then you're good. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, you definitely you 100 percent have to have a heat source. And with it being on thermostat, it's, you know, because I would I would freak out and be like, all right, is this damn thing running all night? And I would go and I put my jacket on <laughs> put my hat, uh-huh. and I would sit down there at first and it. You know, that thing didn't come on much, but the reason why it's so important, too, is because it has a fan in mm-hmm. it and it keeps the air moving when it kicks mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it'll kick on and move that air around because you don't want it sitting in there stagnant. I yeah. mean, you know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and you can also add like a little like, I mean, you can get like a little like four inch fan for like five bucks and put in there, too, mm-hmm, just to mm-hmm. keep that air consistently moving. Yeah. And that really helps with that, too. But, you know, the thing is, is when you're making these things so small, everything for it's cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know excellent what I mean? point. Yeah, excellent point. You, you don't need some, you know, it's like, I was, you know, we're going to switch. And now I'm going to talk about my greenhouse mm-hmm, outside. Mm-hmm. I was looking at heaters for that. Just curious. Yeah. You know, I have no idea what I'm doing. And, um, you know, most people recommend using a space heater, just like okay. what I'm telling mm-hmm. you. But then there's like other ones made for greenhouses and they start at like two, three hundred bucks, wow. which, you know, that's that's a no go. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. You know, that's like so, X percent of what you pay for the greenhouse. Right. right. You know? So now I'm going to switch. I'm going to go back to the greenhouse we're talking about in Batavia's garage or in your garage, if you're listening. Mm-hmm. So that is, you know, it's it keeps it warm. It gives it light. And then if it's really cold at night. You know, and you're like, all right, it's getting pretty chilly. You can take like a wool blanket and then you can drape that over as an extra layer of insta- insulation mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. over the whole thing. Yeah. So, hmm. and that window plastic, super cheap, you know, and it's made for insulation. You could probably even use like, I mean, the problem is, is if you're going to do this and your box is rather small, you know, you could get like an actual greenhouse plastic. It's like 10 mil thick. And put on there, but you're going to pay like a hundred bucks for this giant roll that you're not going to use. Yeah, remember I have the six millimeter plastic. Yeah, and if I say I have something, chances are I have two of them. Yeah, so I have well, enough. And if you, yeah, I have enough yeah. plastic, I think. But it's a good point when it comes to if greenhouse plastic, which I didn't realize is ten millimeter thick, then you know that's the opportunity to say. Um, you know, do you double that up? You know, that's 12. And is that too much inside inside with um, in the garage? I think that it's just about how much are you heating things up? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Outside is where we've talked about, you know, making sure that you don't have too much heat in a space like um, c- completely random tangent. I covered my sweet potatoes, um, the containers with just that same plastic, you know, and it was like 11 o'clock the next because it was raining you know, that night. And it's hard to tell how much rain you're really going to get. So I covered them. And that next day, I didn't go out until like 11 o'clock. I think it was a Saturday or something. And dude, I'm sleeping in like it's nobody's business. I mean, I got up at seven, but still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I was like, oh, shit, it's 11 o'clock. And we've talked about this. Like the sun was out. It wasn't overcast. And I'm like, let me get out there, you know, and pull the plastic back. Um, so anywho, uh, that tangent. OK, so what I'm learning and hearing, though, is there are some definite options for prolonging the season. You know, if you have containers moving things in to your indoor area um there also are options from a you know direct seat starting standpoint and we're talking right now like the heater is definitely needed for my climate because Mm -hmm. these nights are i mean at some point over the winter the nights are in the teens outside if not lower Mm -hmm. um and when you're in new england that's Again, similar weather. Um, yeah. I mean, I think one night it was like two degrees. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I went in there and the inside of it was 70. Mm, wow. Okay. So, and another thing you can do, I mean, you know, monitoring all this stuff is important. So I would get a wireless thermometer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I would put one in in the actual greenhouse as well. Like I got one and I screwed it to the top mm-hmm. and, you, you know, you could tell, yeah. you know, and if... 
every once in a while I'd go out there, like if you had a nice day or it wasn't real cold outside, I would go prop the top open mm-hmm. so it would just get some air, you know, some fresh air in mm-hmm. there because it will get kind of funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to be real careful, yeah. you know, and you got to be careful about overwatering and all mm-hmm, that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it was, it, it worked so well. And I had toyed with doing it again here, but now I don't really need to, hopefully. So what were the so, other um, things you, you said eggplant would be something that you would have started there just based on the longer kind of uh, seed to, you know, starter plant time? Yeah. Yeah, I would do like eggplants, peppers, tomatoes. Um, I wasn't really getting a growing a huge variety mm-hmm, at that mm-hmm. point. But then I had like jade plants in there, you know, and, and like if I was going to do it this year, I would do like flowers, yeah, yeah, a lot of flowers and stuff like mm-hmm. that, because a lot of times those need to, you know, eight to six weeks yeah. out, mm-hmm. especially know? Or the if perennials. Had, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if you had like, even if you have like a, a plant that you had this year, then you're just like, man, it's going to die and I really don't want it mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. You could probably, you know, it'd be worth it to throw that in there early in the year. Yeah. See how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So let it get acclimated. You, yeah. Yeah. You've got all these options. And if you get sun like came in that window in the greenhouse, you know, in the in your garage, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that'll warm it up during the day and that heater won't even cut on. You know? This is my cheap- that's my mind picturing where the window is and where I planned on putting the shelves where I would normally park my car. So I'm going through all of these calculations now yeah. in my brain. <laughs> so I mean it's a really cheap I mean I think I have bought all my wood off the um I went to Lowe's or Home Depot or something I don't know I went and they had like scrap pieces of wood mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I bought all my wood off that I think the whole thing cost me it, it, I mean I'm talking about I had nothing for it yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the whole thing cost me 30 bucks to build interesting that was it yeah and now it took me some time don't get me wrong yeah. it wasn't like I was like quick and I was doing some figuring. I mean, let me tell you, I was figuring. Because, you know, I told you to put, like, in the corners and stuff. But you also need to put, like, a couple pieces in the middle, you know, going sure. up and down. Yeah. I guess they're called braces or studs, whatever. Oh, yeah. To kind of keep it from collapsing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you want that outside piece when you're building it. You want the walls to be smooth. So you don't want to put wood on the outside of it where it's bumpy. Because then your plastic is going to have gaps all in it oh, and all gotcha, that stuff. Gotcha, you're going to yeah. want it tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason why I used the window plastic was because it comes with that tape. So it made that nice, smooth mm-hmm, panel all the way across. Mm-hmm. And I moved that thing to three different houses. Oh, wow. Really? And Yeah. And it made it until the last house. And then it started getting holes. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like it was durable, but the plastic started getting holes mm-hmm, in it. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I had moved it into my um basement next to the heater so i didn't really need to have the plastic anymore yeah yeah. but then i still had this contained space that already had the all the wires built in and everything you know all that stuff to have the lights running and to keep it going Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um it was it was really good and even you know even if you're going to put it in your basement it's just a good place good thing to have because when it's done you close the top that's it and it's done yeah you know i like it i like it a lot yeah and i mean you could get you know i'm sure there's people i mean that's one thing about gardeners is they're crafty uh-huh, as hell. Uh-huh. <laughs> you could figure out how to do like a tiered system maybe or something like that. Yeah, because yours didn't have any shelving or anything in there, right? Yeah. Nope. Mm-hmm. I didn't want shelving. Mm-hmm. I didn't want, I wanted it to be simple. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, because then you have to get light on the bottom yeah. and light yeah. on the top, mm-hmm. you know, and I didn't want it super tall. I wanted it, sim- I, you know, I wanted it so my wife and I could pick it up and move it if we sure. had to, mm-hmm. you know, and the more stuff you add to yep. it, you know, yep. the harder it gets. So, um, but yeah, just, you know, something so easy can extend your season by so much mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or help you get a jump on the next year, especially if you're going to expand your garden this year. Oh, me. You know? Oh, my. <laughs> so yeah. and then as the season comes, like I would start off and I'd have like three eggplants in there and three tomatoes. Mm-hmm. And then as it would go, I would just keep putting more and more in. And it would be filled up with, you know, lettuce and all that stuff. So there's another part I like about it when I consider um, kind of succession planting. And so mm-hmm. remember, now I'm on team start seeds, you know, in the middle of the summer. 
right? Mm-hmm. Um, but even backing that up and, and thinking about it, I've been looking at our chart, remember the chart that we have about kind of when to start inside and all of that um, as far as your seeds to go. And I've really committed in my head, I was driving yesterday and I thought, dang it, if broccoli is going to happen in my garden, if cauliflower is going to happen, you know, it looks like if cabbage is going to happen, like I need to buckle down and make it happen in the spring. Right. You know, and so you think like obviously for a cabbage, you get one you get one head of cabbage off of each plant. It's not something that's going to continue to generate. I've seen some things about broccoli where, you know, you may get some smaller shoots or whatever, but it's like, okay, all right, fine. Are you, when are you starting all of this and how often are you starting seeds? And, and that instance, when it comes to it being in the, um, the garage, it may be more convenient for me once you get to the point of like, oh, we are planting something out and we're starting new seeds, right? Um, versus it being all the way in the basement. So there's something to consider. I feel like now maybe I have like two months to figure this out because the time is yeah. coming. Well, when is your last frost date? First. Last frost date is April the 19th-ish. So yeah, I mean, if you go eight weeks back... Cause it's cold as hell eight weeks before your last yeah, frost man. date. Arctic. You know, yeah. before my last frost, eight weeks before my last frost date, you can tell that it's not, but mm-hmm. you know, up there you, you can't tell it ain't going to stop. Yeah. You think it's never yeah. going to stop freezing. In February, man, it's actually January is when things really start to get cold <laughs> around my park. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's going to go until maybe early March is when you may maybe start to get a break in it. A little yeah. break. Wow. Well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm hip to all that mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, I've lived it, I've done it, but you know, this is a great option and it's like your tunnels that you mm-hmm. use for your uh, beds. Mm-hmm. Like even those outside with just plastic made a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It absolutely made so. a difference. The biggest difference it made with was, um, cause I remember I only had one layer of plastic, but the biggest difference for that I saw wasn't in the fall, but was in the spring. So the bed that I yeah. had to cover it with plastic came to life literally much sooner, earlier than the other beds did. Because I still had some veggies planted from the previous season and beds, you know, all across the backyard in particular. Um, and, you know, my strawberries were a really good example because I had like three strawberry plants from the 2019 season that were in one bed that had been covered all winter Mm -hmm. with plastic and then I had the rest of the strawberry bed that wasn't and I I could see like all right these are new leaves they're perky they're green in the bed that had been covered and it while the other in a bed the strawberry plants came to life at some point it was weeks you know apart so I don't remember the exact timing but but yeah so that's your option for you to do something like that I think that's a, a good option you know, but just remember, if you're going to build it, keep it as small as you can mm-hmm. so you don't have to heat that mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? It makes all the difference in the world. I mean, yeah. what did you say the measurements of yours that you remember were again? I was two feet, roughly two feet high, um, two feet wide by three feet, maybe. Mm-hmm. So and I mean, I was doing seedlings, so I didn't need a whole lot of space. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's always you can go bigger, you can do multiple ones, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. So just think beforehand, how big is what I want to put in there going to be? Yeah. You yep, know, yep, yep, yep. So okay. but and putting those hinges on it so you can open that top. Oh, and also put um, weather stripping around the top, too. I glued it down so then it wouldn't have a draft as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So in between the f- the frame and the door, yeah, 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 yeah. I would do that. Mm-hmm. So and it was cool, man. I mean, it was awesome. I would go there, and I mean, I had to tweak it. Like I put something. I'm trying to think how I did it. I got you know on like screen doors they have the hook and eye mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. holds it. The cage baby has some, those. Yeah, yeah. I got something like that. So when I opened it, it would just stay open mm-hmm, on its mm-hmm. own. Or, you know, you can put a prop in there or something. But, I mean, I would go down there and open it up and it'd be all nice and humid and warm. <laughs> yeah. and you could go in there and just, I mean, because if there's seedlings, it's not like you're really doing anything. You're just going to water mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you're going to check them, you know. Yeah. And it gives you something to do in the wintertime, man. You know, something to keep you. It's like when you start your seedlings and you're constantly yeah. 
checking on him. You rub your hands over <laughs> him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Get a little sniff, you know. Yeah. So it's just it's part of it. But yeah, it's another you know, opportunity to have another connection to growing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, while we talk about, you know, I think we've both commented on like it's nice to have a break and kind of the work of the garden over the course of the winter. But I don't I don't want to go from growing you know, some things to growing nothing, you know, like, right. I'm in now. Right. You know, So, um, it's a lot more manageable if you will, too, from what you're describing. So those are all, that's the, that's my biggest option. And that's, what's always worked really good for me. And, um, I'm curious, are you, are you, do you think you'll try it? Um, I'm going to check the measurements that I have for the space I'm considering, um, yeah. and to be quite frank, my spare wood, right? Like, you know, yeah. like my spare wood pile, if I have pieces that I can kind of, um, pull together, I mean, I think I'm, I'm super intrigued by it more than any, excuse me, anything. And I think that while this is, wasn't exactly the plan that I had, I think the idea of keeping it super, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, but I think the idea of keeping it super small, it gives you like it's not like it's I'm not building another garage I'm not building another house I'm not building another grow Mm -hmm. room Um, and so yeah I'm super curious about it now and luckily my garage is still just a complete shit show right yeah Mm -hmm. so at some point when I started thinking about um, oh I'm going to transition this into some growing space I decided to pull everything out this is the third time I've done this 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 year pull everything out into the middle of the garage so now there's like a little maze that i go through if i want to like go like through the garage to the alley right uh, because i have everything kind of scattered all over cars in the front of the house because well you know there's no room for it in the garage um but i have between now and basically when the weather turns to kind of get this all situated which means that i can move things around much easier Right. So if I want to build something and we've talked about this, like the time is is now while in inside of the garage is easier to build in the middle of the cold. But what we're talking about is being able to do some of these things like, you know, in five, six, seven weeks, you know. So, yeah, I like it. So I think I may try it. If I do, I will report back. If I don't, I'll tell you what I did instead and why I didn't try it. Yeah. Um, this is a very this is very short notice for me in my brain. Of course it is. Um, and if I don't try it, it was I didn't have enough time to mull it over. I yeah. mean, normally it takes me like, you know, one to two calendar years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, you're, you're talking about building something and I'm not saying this about you, but just in general, like sometimes when you're like, I'm going to go build something, it's like you take a step back and you're like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, cause I was the same way. Like I was just like, what's a greenhouse. Okay. A greenhouse is a place to grow plants. It's got to be heated and it needs plastic, you know, something to keep the heat in. And it was only because I was putting that plastic on my windows. And one day I was just like, aha, you know what I mean? Cause we were trying to save on our damn power Mm -hmm. bill as much Mm -hmm. as we could. I mean, it was so cold and the house is ridiculous. And by the way, the landlord was super weird. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> he had he was writing a book about parades around the world about penises. Yeah, he was weird. There's enough. There are enough of those to write a book about. Apparently so. Mm-hmm. He would talked a lot about penises, wow. <laughs> a lot, and it was very uncomfortable. I was like, he's like, yeah, I got a lollipop at my house, the shape of a penis I got from Japan, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Whatever, dude. Well, so. you know what? Because we talked, um, I think last time we talked about cold frames and my nervousness. I was like, ah, no, I'm going to find somebody, a handy lady or a handy man to build a, a cold frame. But for whatever reason, this, like the frame with plastic speaks to me a lot more so and the way that you've described this and i've seen it online but i mean all of the images all of the pieces all of the articles all the things like there's a information overload in my head and so sometimes i put things in the back burner in my mind right completely forget about it until something else comes up but this also makes me think about um i have one bed that in the next year or two i'm probably gonna need to replace 
And it also makes me think about how I would approach that bed from a size perspective. So bigger isn't always better. This is I'm talking outdoors now. So I'm taking the idea that you've described of, of an indoor greenhouse the simplistic, the simplicity of the frame and saying, huh, because, you know, I'm all about repurposing some things, ideas and actual things. And I'm like, I bet I could build a instead of just using the low tunnels, the hoops, I could build mm-hmm. an actual frame. I'm confident enough in my ability because remember, I actually installed a ceiling fan 10 years ago. So yeah. I feel like I could build a frame for it that could cover some of these beds, um, which brings me into a whole different realm of like kind of spring gardening primarily. Gosh, man, I, I got to, I got a can a whole bunch of shit, man. I don't have time to start working through this in my mind yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. I got to go can some green yeah, beans man. too. So. God, darn it. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. I, um, I think that even if the, the climate is a bit warmer, you could take this idea and again, maybe you don't require the space heater depending on where it is. Maybe your garage gets a lot of light. You know, my chances are you're probably going to need some grow lights, but, um, you're 100% going to need grow yeah. lights, especially if you're seed starting seeds, because there are two things unless, I'm talking about. I'm talking, unless you live in a glass house. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, um, so there are two things I'm talking about when it comes to using this idea. There is the starting seeds and there is the more mature plant, not a tomato plant, not, you know, go. Yes. Young Ben. I have my hand mm-hmm. raised. <laughs> Lettuce would be a great thing to put in there. Lettuce and chard because they don't get tall. Yeah. Yeah. So and... And well, my chart, my giant by, hook, giant forward hook, giant forward, giant hook, whichever one that yeah. is. Oh, it's tall, baby. But you're now seeping well, you got into. you one that says giant. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're now seeping into the idea of indoor growing, period, which is a whole. Well, that's what this is. Well, so, so it, indoor growing um, is growing in the grow room indoors where it's inside of a house where there are lights where it's warm enough it's different than growing outside in the garage because we know those temperatures are different in my garage Uh, but i have well think about it this way though if you have if and i'm not trying to convince you to build it don't think i am but if you had something like this and it's just like with me and my current situation like my plan is to grow what is going to grow in the cold Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you can't you know, even if I do add heat to it, I'm not going to keep the, at 50 degrees at night when it's below freezing. Yeah. I'm not going to do yeah. it. I'm just looking to edge it up a little mm-hmm. bit. So if you grow lettuce, kale, like a lot of that stuff can go below freezing, no problem. So that brings me to the part around um, growing vegetables indoors that were a part of my plan for this year. Right. Right. Um, and so this is like one more space because at some point I'm not ready to commit more of my house to this and based on what i grew i started and i know 60 tomato plant starts but i used damn near every shelf that i had on the two shelving units in the grow room right Right. so space will be an issue at some point right so not if you don't start 60 tomatoes if we rewind i thought we said we're not talking about the 60 tomato didn't i did I say that? Oh, I yeah. thought you were just saying for last year. I, I'm talking about this year. So, into who, if there is a room, I shall find something to grow in and just know that. So, this gives Do me it. one more space to be able to grow. Yeah, it gives you a lot of options. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, think about it this way. If you take it and you look at um, like a square foot gardening mm-hmm. technique and you have this space if you have it set up at two by three mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and then you you take and you put a foot front you have a four by four you know you have a four by four you have a four by on. four foot bed mm-hmm. four by mm-hmm. four foot bed you can put four lettuces eight spinach and I'm trying to do math in my head. I don't know. It doesn't even matter because I'm sold, carrots. right? Like, <laughs> No, you can't do carrots. It'd be too deep. 
But I mean, and you could do like char. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do like yeah, yeah. four plants of char. Yeah. I think it's two per square foot for char. That in this thing alone, and it wouldn't be too high, and you'd be good. You don't have to keep it as warm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you know, if you think about it that way, like there's a lot of options. And if I was going to do that, if it was me, I would take a bag of dirt and I would drop the whole damn bag in there. And I would cut the top mm-hmm, off mm-hmm. just like I did in that video I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's what I would plan in. And you know who has dirt? You got dirt for <laughs> days, girl. <laughs> you found a sale and you said, damn it, I'm going to buy dirt like I ain't ever Listen, seen dirt before. I, do you know that they that sale price went down again? And two things. So um, this goes back. And by the time this airs, I don't know. Like the price of dirt has dropped. Period. So I normally um, only one summer did I ever order a soil drop. I've always used bag dirt. And um, for me in Chicago, the type of bag that I bought what was a two cubic square feet. Yeah. Two point two yeah. cubic square feet. Usually what, cubic feet. Yeah. And it's like seven bucks and some change closer to eight dollars. Round it up to eight dollars once you get tax on it. And I stumbled into a Home Depot. This is where I purchased this particular brand. And what was it like? Three fifty, whatever half of that was. Do you know that I went back to buy? I think Mums, um, and they had it for like two sixty or two seventy. Like wow, the price that you would buy topsoil, but like three times the bag size. Um, and the size, like, like this is how much dirt should have always cost if you're ever going to pay for dirt. So anyway, I happened to have, because I had the, um, I was going to buy the mums. Finally, I got the, it's 10% off, like your purchase of like up to X hundred dollars or whatever. And I got that 10% off. But all of that said, I got dirt and I think you're continuing to, to roll this into ideas that I'm feeling like. I really wanted to try. I didn't get a chance to do it. The grow in a bag. Um, I, I love go. the idea of, damn it, I'm almost like sold. I'm almost like doing an inventory of my spare wood. Damn it, damn it, damn it. This is a good idea, man. But see, and I mean, <clears throat> I didn't even think about that when I was doing mm-hmm, it before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that would have been the greatest thing ever for me to do because it's so easy to grow. I mean, it's like, how many gardeners like to go and buy a head of lettuce? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't piss you Blast off. You're like, damn, man. I don't have any lettuce. I got to go buy yeah. it. You know what I mean? And then this, because it's one of those things, man, it just, it continues to grow in the cold. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so there's no reason why in a small space you can get that, you know, you could make that happen. So. Yeah. But I think again, taking this idea and flipping it, because now it's the I have these established beds, mm-hmm. right? Um, you got a pterodactyl flying around you. Do you see it? Oh, you saw. I the see sh- it. It's big. Yeah, you saw the um, the shadow. No, I saw the whatever it is fly in front of you. It was big. Nets, man. House nets. They're as big oh, as that's a scary. They're ass as big net. as rats. You know. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So uh, I have my little uh, vinegar drops to, to coax them to that. And some of them are just smarter. Remember, this office has a lot of house plants. So, you know, yeah. you gotta be careful about how much I water, how little I water, how much is, it attracts stuff. So anyway, um, my head is almost bubbling over with the idea of it's so not not permanent. That's another reason why I like it. Right. You know, yeah. so I'm taking again the box covering and I'm like, I have enough space on my patio. I wouldn't do this now. But if you think about the the, um, the spring, I have enough space on my patio to literally lay a bag of dirt. There's probably a bag of dirt out there right now and build that cover for it. We're talking about put it right on top of it, you know. Yeah. <sighs> endless opportunities endless opportunities but yeah there's a lot of options for you man so i don't know i'm trying to think of what else you could grow in that space and i think those i mean those would really be the options that i would you know yeah, to, leafy like, grow greens you can do like a, a mixed uh greens you know when it comes to well you could obviously if you're one of those people that likes to to, to grow micro greens I wasn't going to go there because I just didn't want to get into that with you, but 
<laughs> you can do. I'm I'm doing arugula for this fall's garden in a container. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, that doesn't get high or tall. You mentioned spinach. I think generally you're right. Chard. I think you can do any leafy greens besides things yeah. like like collard kale greens and, and kale. They get big. You can do baby kale, meaning you harvest it when it's smaller. Um, yeah. But that those roots get big on kale. That the roots get big and yeah. the plants get big for collards. Um, I think that you could do leaf lettuce or heads of lettuce. Um, I don't think heads of lettuce would work. No, well. you think it's two two feet? Yeah. No, I just I think they take up too much space. You, I think you would get more out of a leaf lettuce. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and by the way, I am not a fan of head lettuce, anyways. Oh, well, maybe because I, I would consider like a head of lettuce, like maybe that's not technically it, but like romaine lettuce, I consider like it's the whole, full head. And that no, grows. I'm talking about like iceberg. Oh, no, 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 no. No. I, I, um, no, no. Um, I don't like mm-mm. it. It makes me mm-mm. mad. Did you see that there was um, a recall on um, um, pre- prepared fruit, like fruit bowls and things? And that's why all 15,000 people that are listening to us right now belong here because they don't have to worry about mm-hmm. that ding it boom that's that's like on the on the bell you see you hear the the mustang yeah. going by here the yeah. on the bell scale that is a nine like it's the full like put my hand all the way behind my head come down on the bell and let the whole ring go through you just let you've it you've been roll, getting like baby. sixes up until this point but you know <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, a couple Thanksgivings ago when there was a recall on lettuce and people were dying from it and stuff. I remember we had, you know, we don't usually have people over at our house for Thanksgiving for some reason. And they, we had a, we had the entire family over 23 people over at our house. And I went out and I harvested my lettuce and made a salad. And everybody was like, I'm not eating that. I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're like, well, it's recalled. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that shit ain't recalled out yeah, there, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good. Yeah. And they were like, I haven't had a salad in a mm-hmm, month. This is mm-hmm, the best. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it overshined the turkey because yeah. they just hadn't had it in so long. So yeah, that's it was, a, but I it had was my amazing. first fall breakfast salad um, this week. And uh, damn, I mean, that's one of the. Th- damn it, Batavia. I, I respect you for your eating I'm habits. I'm telling it's you, amazing. man. I, um, and by the way, before you carry on, I've been meaning to tell you this whole show. You should wear that hat more often. Oh, uh, you like this is my. You know, my head is so big though that I have to. I can't order hats <laughs> online. I have to actually try hats on. And so when I get a hat that fits, that doesn't give me a headache from wearing it. Yeah. Oh, it's all day long, right? So this hat will be worn on like the next six episodes because this is kind of my spring and fall hat. It makes me feel Good. young and hip. Yeah. You look young yeah, and hip. Know, you are I know, young and I hip. Know. I have pigtails too, so that that's I'm like, I'm like going all in on it. I officially look like I'm I'm just gonna say young because I'm not gonna like offend myself. Um so yeah, breakfast salad. There is something about walking around and picking. Um, we know we love to, to harvest food. We love to pick things, but to actually pick what you're going to put on a plate or in a bowl, um, like as the meal, you know, rinse it off and then go ahead, shred those leaves, cut those leaves up and you have a salad. I obviously miss cucumbers, but you know, there are a lot of things that I can sub in. You know, I got a bunch of peppers for that crunch. Um, it's good times. It's good times. We're only weeks away now before all of this turns. I haven't had a cucumber. I had one cucumber in the past year and a half. Oh, wow. Because my cucumbers didn't produce yeah, this yeah. year. And I refuse to eat them from the store. I refuse. Uh, you sound like my grandmother years and years ago. But this They're is, gross. Before she passed away, she talked about like two things, watermelon and cucumbers. And watermelon was, you know, as a little girls, you know, her family, you know, working on a farm and having you know all kinds of fields that they would work in she talked about how they all would walk back from the watermelon patch with the watermelon even the little kids and so she's like i've had enough watermelon for my lifetime i'm not going to eat whatever's in that store right you know no and uh cucumbers good for her yeah yeah. cucumbers are very much the same like once things started to change meaning you know you know how it is a, a product just forever changes it just tastes different she'd toss it out and be like, nope, I'm done with it. I don't ever need to eat it again. Just like the restraint, you know? 
next time you see your grandmother, give her a kiss, kiss on the cheek for me. When, when I join she, her she in, in, in heaven, wink, wink. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, but when I speak okay, to her mind. again, because um, I still do that. So this is your other grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get confused. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and, and yeah, I, I was in the grocery store because I know that I'm in my salad days now, like cucumbers. Ha! <laughs> I, yeah. Will I dare buy you? I won't make that promise once we get to the top of the year. <laughs> but right now, I spit on cucumbers. Not actually, because I'm not that kind of person. But uh, if you spit on a cucumber in a grocery store now, you I'm are telling a you, demon. Man, a demon that will be jailed and won't live to to see another garden day. I can't have that. I would rather fart in public than spit on a cucumber. <laughs> I, w- I would rather that for you too. <laughs> <laughs> But check it. I'm Look, hungry. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> We're on the same page. Yeah, man. Like, I am. I had the taffy apple, ap- apple taffy, the caramel apples with you know, peanuts on it before, but that wasn't enough to hold me over. So we need to talk food. We do need to talk food, and you need to get your pen and paper ready. <gasps> this is going to be a game changer. The recipe of the day. This episode is proudly brought to you by San Diego Seed Company, a company that is dedicated to providing organic heirloom varieties of seeds for your small urban farm. That's right. You heard me. You are a small urban farmer. You provide food for your family and share with your neighbors, and they are dedicated to providing you with the best seeds for a bountiful harvest. Check them out at sandiegoseedcompany.com or on social media at, you guessed it, San Diego Seed Company. We all have fall flavors, right, Batavia? Mm-hmm. Fall dishes. And cinnamon is like the big one, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I poop on cinnamon. I don't care about it like everybody <laughs> else does. I'm one of those. <laughs> okay. But this is something that we actually um we make for thanks because you know we don't eat mm-hmm. turkey. <gasps> How dare us. Yeah. So we make this for Thanksgiving every year, but we also eat it throughout, and apparently this year I'm gonna have it. 14 times um is it it's a roasted butternut squash yeah so what we're going to do is you're going to take your butternut squash and you're going to cut it lengthwise right down the middle Mm -hmm. and you're going to scoop the seeds out if you grew the butternut squash this is a perfect time to save your seeds Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you, you know give it a shot see what happens but scoop all the seeds out and if the hole's not big enough you can definitely cut up the neck of the squash a little bit and make a little bit more of a trench because we're going to stuff it. Mm-hmm. And so what we're going to do is once we do that, you put it in the oven face down and a, on a cookie sheet, um, maybe a quarter inch of water at the mm-hmm. bottom just so it doesn't stick. And you want to roast it. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it's like four, I think I do like 425 for like 40 minutes or something just until the skin starts to brown a bit. Mm -hmm. While it's doing that, what I get is I get onion and I cut it up. I get chard. I cut Mm -hmm. it up, you know, and mushrooms Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I sliced mushrooms and then I start sauteing and I saute the onion first. Once the onion turns translucent, I add the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And once they turn to the color it desired, then I put in the chard and let it wilt down. And then we add sage. I'd say about start with, and it's up to your personal taste. I think we use about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of Mm -hmm. sage. Salt. And don't make that face, Batavia, when I say sage. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) It's a seasoning I can do. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's a seasoning I can do without for for food. Yeah. it's a weird season. It is definitely though Thanksgiving E, Thanksgiving S. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's why we usually do it because mm-hmm. it goes with the stuffing yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then we add um, a pinch of cayenne pepper, salt and pepper. Obviously, everything gets salt and pepper. And then what else? Oh, garlic goes in it as well. And then you just saute it up. You mix it up real good. 
and then you put it, you, you take your squash out, you flip it over, and then you put this mixture mm-hmm, in there. Mm-hmm. And if you really wanted to add like some texture, you could put some breadcrumbs in there or something to kind of give a little bit of texture. We don't do that, but that's something you can definitely do. And then you roast it again, side up, face up, for about 15 minutes or so. Okay. And just let all those flavors meld together. Mm -hmm. And you got you a, I mean, it's a hearty, delicious meal. So all this time I've been on my phone, like writing verbatim, as if I'll never hear this again. Like, all right, roast it again for about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Takes, before that, take squash out and flip it. Okay. Because, um, I, you know, we talked about it. I'm a meat eater. Um, Mm -hmm. However, you know, there could be weeks at a time where I really don't eat meat. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I'm always looking for some interesting vegetable recipe. Remember, I'm growing butternut squash this year. There is a good chance that I will get one or two off the plant. I'm, I'm I'm fighting against time. Right. So one plant has been basically decimated uh, by powdery mildew. There's it's still alive. Right. So between that and my first frost, I'm hoping that these squash have a chance to mature because there's some nice looking squash on these plants. Um, So, you know, if not, I'll just have a lesson learned as far as when I planted them. I planted them on June 22nd um, this year. And so that clearly may not be enough days for them but gosh would it be wonderful i mean i have one that's as big as your head bigger i ain't as big yeah. as my head. <laughs> um, i got a big head yeah, too. Man, it'd be so cool to yeah that's yeah i like it i like it a lot either way i'm not gonna buy butternut squash if mine don't come out at five dollars a squash listen dude i got 28 of them this year do the math that's how much I made off that one crazy ass plant. It's craziness. That's insane. Oh, that reminds me. When did you remember? Wh- Wait, is that the volunteer? I keep on asking, or is that the yeah. okay? Because I was gonna say, when did you plant it? It. I mean, spring. Yeah, yeah. You know, <sighs> so many ideas. So. so anyway, I won't buy butternut squash, but if I don't get them off of my plants, then I shall um, look forward to this next year. This time. Oh, crap. I forgot, too. Um, when you're done, drizzle a little bit of um, maple syrup in it. See? Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Way to come through, man. <laughs> My bad. It's like... Because you're... I was living in New Hampshire at the time when we when we started eating mm-hmm. it. And, you know, um, in New Hampshire and, you know, close to Vermont, yeah. maple syrup yeah, is everything. Man. That, um... That sounds really good. I'm really pleased with that. You are. I'm going to email it to I myself just in case. I don't want to accidentally delete this. Because again, clearly I'll never hear this again. If I was going to bail off of the fruit wagon, I figured I had to bring some heat. See, this is how great of a friend and a co-host I am. I wasn't even going to acknowledge that this ain't fruit. And um, you did come through. Like, this is a high. It is yeah, a high. Yeah, man. I love it. I, we eat it all mm-hmm, the time. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like I said, we have 28 butternut squash, so we're going to be eating it a lot. Speaking of. I don't really. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask off subject. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research. Will butternut squash continue to ripen after? Our, so it's done. They won't. He's shaking yeah, his basically. head. No, they won't continue. To but ripen. I mean, don't throw it yeah. out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't throw it out. It might ripen a little mm-hmm. bit afterwards, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't ripen yeah. a lot. So. Yeah. But it'll rot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is the hard because it's my first time growing it this year. And it's hard for me to know from where I am. I know the whole color, you know, look for this color. I know because I have spaghetti squash, too. And I know about like the vine and how the vine um, to the vegetable is supposed to like, kind of shrivel a bit more. And um, and that's happening for one itty bitty one. You know, it's like a, the Cornish hen of butternut squash, you know. Yeah. Um, but the other ones, they seem to be a long way from it. And it's such a shame. You know, if I had chickens, then I would definitely be feeding them. Maybe not so much because it's not right. But anywho, um, it's going to be a sad we day. Had a, uh, we had a chicken death last night. So, oh, yeah, it got eaten by some animals. Yeah. 
But that bitch deserved it. No moment of silence for her. She was bullying the other one. So I don't know how I feel about all of that. But I will and say this is a part of the reason why I um, I like being an urban gardener in the middle of a big city growing a bunch of food because of all the things I have to worry about, it's not animals in the wild eating other animals for my property. Yeah. You just got to worry about zombies coming to eat them. They're wild animals. This is true. I've been preparing all of my life. I didn't even know it that I was preparing for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, well, first of all, so my wife, so a lady at my wife's work came to her and said, you have chickens? And we said, yeah. She goes, well, I have, I think the hurricane, t- one of the hurricanes took out her chicken coop mm-hmm. or something, or maybe she just ran out of room. She's like, I have these chickens. They're still laying. You're, but you're welcome to mm-hmm. them. So we got these. We went and got two chickens. Mm-hmm. They were overweight. They had rashes. Oh no! And they've never laid an egg in two years. Oh wow! So we're basically fostering these chickens. Uh-huh. And so we're like, okay, that's fine. And then you don't lay eggs. You only eat our food, and then you bully the other wow. chickens so they don't lay yeah, eggs. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's we have no there, hard yeah. feelings about mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool that we, you know, we were totally cool with like just taking it in, letting it live its mm-hmm, life, mm-hmm. you know, being happy animal mm-hmm. lovers, whatever. But uh, you can't be pecking other chickens. Yeah, so it's tough. You know, well, my story is, is nothing like that. I have um, stray cats. That's as, as good as it gets. And everyone that I've talked to that are cat lovers my saying of well they keep away the mice you know from outside yeah um they say that yeah that's true it's just not some myth and so for that reason because cats freak me out i'm like not necessarily afraid of them but i'm suspicious of them and so yeah right we talked about this right my cat looks like she's gonna kill me all the time and so um there are they 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 look to be small enough that they're actually kittens. They look completely different. One has gray and black fur. Another one looks like Heathcliff as far as the coloring goes. And I'm like, you guys can't be sister and brothers, but they are road dogs, man. They kick it together. They literally sleep together. Like yeah. I came out this morning um, and looked out the kitchen window. This isn't the first time I've I've seen them this way. They're all cuddled together. It's like 7 a.m. I'm like, don't you guys have a job to get to? They're like asleep. And then they wake up. And I most times I chase them away because it's kind of like I don't want them to make a habit out of sleeping on my, you know, um, my backyard furniture. But I'm tired. It's been a long summer. It's, you know, the fall has started to be long. I'm just like, all right, go ahead, sleep in. I'm saying this to myself about the kittens. And so finally, a couple of minutes, I start making coffee and they start waking up. It's, it is the cutest thing as they stretch. But then yeah. because I can see them out of the window, they can see me as well. They're looking at me like breakfast time. I'm like, nope. Now I'm going to chase you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So they scurried off together. I've seen them on my front porch as well. Like, again, sleep together in the afternoon naps and stuff. Um, so I don't know if they're just like the youngest kittens on the block. <laughs> they're just like, they're staying together to protect hey, each other. Hey, they're keeping the squirrels away. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. They're also pooping in some of my containers, but you know. That's a different story. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. If I was a cat, I'd poop in a container too. I mean, it looks like a place to go. I mean, that's a part of what I recognize. I don't like it, but I kind of think that I have, you know, created this environment <laughs> for them. So... <laughs> My cat, I caught my cat pooping in the garden this year. Oh, no. She didn't poop in the garden anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay. I sprayed her ass with a water hose. She was a ghost, boy. She ran right back in the house, (laughs) wet, looking like a little rat. (laughs) It was worth it, though. But, so, yeah, that's uh, butternut squash. Um, I don't like uh, spaghetti squash. I actually really enjoy it, but I ended up... It It makes me mad. Oh, of course it does. Let me just say this. I, one, crowded them because I planted in like a two by three foot space. No, like Mm -hmm. two by four foot space. I planted two winter squash. First mistake. Um, And they did really well for a long time, but you know, you know, and I basically created the environment for the powdery mildew. Um, I planted them late, as I mentioned, in June. Um, and I kept forgetting which one I planted where. So I dropped a couple of seeds, direct sowed them. And then one of the butternut squash, both of the butternut squash came up. And so instead of tossing, 
you know, the extra one at the end, I actually just dropped it into one of my raised beds, which is crazy because it's sitting on the patio, which also brings right. you back to like how that maybe 12 inches of soil, maybe 10 even, um, how little soil something like that needs to grow. But anywho, bo- all three plants. So I have a butternut squash plant. I have a um, spaghetti squash plant that are all planted in the earth. Those are the two that are basically like, it looks like a ghost town. They're so bad based on the powdery mildew. The other plant has probably the, the biggest butternut squash I've ever seen. Um, and I keep on, I'm pretty sure I'm like 90 some percent sure it's butternut squash and not spaghetti squash. You know, once you don't know, if you're not familiar with something as you see it grow, it takes a bunch of times to, for me to kind of remind yeah. myself. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is also butternut squash and it's like, it's humongous, you know, and I'm really hoping, hopeful. The one more quick question. I need to get them out before the frost too, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not looking good, people. Yeah. A couple warm days and I mean they go fast though. You you might be surprised. Yeah, I'm hoping I will be surprised. But your warm days are coming to an end quick. Well, my warm so. my days are warm but not for long, meaning like that out of 24 hours you get 2 or 3 hours of warmth. You know. Sure there's still sun, but that's because you live up in the tundra, oh, man. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, uh, you know, I remember when I first went vegan and everybody's like, butternut squash is a great replacement for pasta. No, it's, uh, spaghetti squash. That's what yeah, I meant. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Uh-huh, of course. Spaghetti mm-hmm. squash. So I grew it. That was me rewinding so you can basically say it again. Go ahead. I grew spaghetti squash and I remember I cracked it open, you know, I cut it open and I cooked it and I was, I was expecting it to taste like pasta mm-hmm. because of what everybody mm-hmm. said. And I spit it out and I was like, man, what the hell is this? This ain't no damn spaghetti. Yeah. I was mad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, this is crap. Yeah. And then ever since then, I just, you know, it's just because I had that wrong impression in my head. Yeah. And that's something you know because I mean? the texture is so completely different. Um, it's not spaghetti at not all. At it all. looks like not spaghetti, but it is nothing. Like, I mean, it's basically a butternut squash. Yeah, zoodles that you would make with zucchini is closer to spaghetti. But again, we know the taste is completely different. It's just, again, right. it's the idea of treat it like you would treat spaghetti, meaning you could add some pasta sauce to it. But it's absolutely dif- uh, different. The thing that I had to be careful around, because there was a time where I was doing more like pescatarian diet. And um, so... Which is what I do okay, now. Yeah. So when I did that, I also was just subbing in a lot more vegetables. And I just had to be careful because I just ended up adding a bunch of oil, you know. And so yeah. that's the piece where it's like, OK, I'm trying to get it to some type of texture, some type of flow that puts me in the mind of spaghetti, too. Yeah. And this ain't that, you know. So um, that's the reason why I was like, oh, shoot, I it. I have a lot more spaghetti squash, which I would have been satisfied with two or three, maybe four. Um, yeah. Then I would, you know, I wanted more butternut squash because I know I could do more with it. So anywho, either way, we'll see if I get any. You know, you see what yeah. happens when you're not grateful? You see what happens? I didn't, nobody said you weren't grateful. Powdery mildew comes in. The tundra starts coming. Greedy. Yeah, I did. That's because you got greedy. That is classic. I, got some, I see dirt, I plant. That's absolutely right. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's a real problem that every gardener I've ever met and ever seen has. You know what I mean? It's it's hard to leave space. That's one more stray cat, but she looks like she may be a house cat that's gotten out. She's white and pretty and looks like even has a, co- a collar on. Uh, well, maybe she's just out running. I hope she finds her way back home because these cats over here... I don't know, they don't now, play. I will tell you, going back to my chicken, um, my neighbor... Um, she's Laotian mm-hmm. and she'll straight kill a chicken oh, and no. eat it. Like she's got a little chopping block out back. Okay. Great. So yeah, I just, we were like, well, maybe we'll take the chicken over there. And, uh, I was like, I can't do it, man. Mm-mm. I can't do Mm-mm. it. And she got, somebody had some roosters and you know, roosters are annoying as hell. They're loud. <laughs> so they, they gave her the roosters and she killed one of them. And they ate it, and she decided she didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. She just, yeah. for some reason, that was it. The other two roosters got loose, and now we have wild roosters living in our neighborhood. <laughs> and so we can hear them crowing, mm-hmm. but we have coyotes, too. So, you know, these things got to be beast if they can get yeah. away from the, you know, coyotes and foxes and stuff. So, wow. 
Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, like you talk about like you're in the middle of a forest, and clearly you are. I'm in a forest. My backyard's a forest, but then I have a small neighborhood, mm-hmm. and then there's a farm across the street. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's there's a farm behind us across the street, and then down the street there's another farm. So it's like they put this neighborhood in in the middle of this farmland. Yeah. But didn't, it, that farmland is for commercial purposes, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Soybean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. It's it's what we call a food desert. There it is. How far is the nearest grocery store? Like if you guys were to so, drive. In my so and this is what the movie is kind of goes around is if we go it's like five miles from my mm-hmm. house to four grocery stores on one street corner. Mm-hmm. But if you go up to the city up there, there's like I don't even know where there's a grocery store in like certain area. So and that is called a food swamp. Yeah. So, but that's another conversation altogether. And the only reason why is because these farmers, they're growing soybean and corn for animal feed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's nothing that, you know, humans can Mm -hmm. eat. So. Yeah. There's something to be said even about what that ultimately does to the land. And you kind of think about next generation farming there, like that whole thing. Right. But that's, that's definitely like, that's a whole podcast series of episodes. Oh (laughs) yeah. That's like, that's like super intense, Mm -hmm, deep mm -hmm. talk. They, um, when I was in upstate New York one time and you know, upstate New York is one mile North of New York city, which is in the Southern most of the state. Okay. Okay. But we were actually upstate. Uh, we went, we were driving and we saw somebody that said fresh honey. So we stopped and it was on a butternut squash farm. Speaking of which. Uh-huh. Coolest thing ever. It was just nothing but winter squashes and butternut squashes as far as the eye uh-huh. could see. It was cool. And I think they rotated out every year as like butternut squash one year. And I want to say the next year was uh, like cabbage or something like that. Yeah, there's so. nothing that's more beautiful than just a big row or rows of the same plant. You know, like yeah. when you see, um, um, you know, a bunch of collars row after row, a bunch of lettuce row after row. It's just something about the eye, you know, uh, a bunch of squash plants, you know. Um, well, I went. we went hiking a couple weeks ago. We were driving down the road and uh, we we're like, damn, everybody's got corn, corn, corn. And then as soon as we crossed the county line. I was like, damn, they got watermelon farms here. They got Mm -hmm. sunflower farms. They were growing reefer on the side of the road. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, man, that's what's up. They got all kinds of stuff. And this is the county I want to live in. (laughs) All that fresh water. Well, that's the the reason why, you know, I'd never want to be a farmer for business, you know, because you basically find the crop that, you know, your soil allows you to grow the best. You may have the experience in yada, 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 you know, but I want to grow all of the things clearly. <laughs> well, there's, there's a family. Um, I'm like distant related mm-hmm. to them, but they have a farm, but their farm has a produce stand and they grow like a full grocery mm-hmm. store in their okay, farm. Okay. Yeah. So they have everything and then they go when they sell it on the side of the road every year. That's how they make their living. So, I mean, it is, po- I, th- I don't know why people, monocrop the way they do i don't know i guess so they can you know sell to grocery stores and stuff but i mean i imagine it's around what's um what makes them competitive right what's quick to turn as far as profit what can they get the best dollar yeah Mm -hmm. right but if you know so if i took my whole backyard and i just turned it into a giant garden and i took all that produce and went out and sold it i could you could probably make a living off Mm -hmm, of it mm mm-hmm you know what I mean? But I, yeah, monocropping is not for me. Yeah. I'm not into that. So. I'm glad someone else is because clearly the $5 butternut squash has to come from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> not this year. It comes from my garden, boy. <laughs> what is what is 5 times 28? Do the math for me. Times 5 is 140, says my calculator on my phone. So $140 worth of squash is what I got out of that this year. That's actually pretty That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Oh. That's crazy when you put it at it that yeah. way. And then I can some of it so that, you know, that's even more. And that's wild to think about, man. Speaking of. Like all your tomatoes. Yeah, right. I actually have um, some diced tomatoes to can um, today. But anywho, yeah. I wrote to Ball, Mr. Ball, as in, you know, preserving 
mm-hmm. because I had seen some reports of this and I wanted to ask how much um, if the lids, so we know that we're not when preserving food when canning a particular, no matter which method, you know, I've learned that you're not reusing lids. So I got that straight, right? It's a one use deal. And so I wrote to them and I know I could have asked you because I know you already know the answer um, to say, do the lids have an expiration date? And if so, what date? Um, and so, because, you know, it's been a shortage this year on all kinds of canning supplies. And while I feel like I have a bunch of jars, you know, lids are, you know, it's a thing that you're going to need to to have. So anyway, Mr. Ball's representative wrote back and said five years from the manufacturer's date. Right. And so my question obviously is, and I think I know the answer and you know, I'm just being overly technical is that, five years plus the 18 months that you say it's fresh for or is that 18 months that you say it's fresh for within the five years but either way I looked and I actually have some unused jars from guess what year with all that I said I don't know but whatever you're squeezing you gotta stop you're oh, gonna drive me crazy sorry. <laughs> <laughs> five years ago 2015 and you know what I wasn't yeah. doing in 2016 so what I figured out anything I knew that I've bought it's basically from the 2019 date range you know so what was manufactured last year is what we see in the stores this year is what I'm gathering but in 2015 they were manufactured I bought them in 2016 because that's when I started getting the itch to can and guess when I started canning 2019. 2019. So that's a three year gap that it takes me to get off the pot. So the idea of building a indoor greenhouse and bringing it back around in two months is like (sighs) brain is exploding. I'm, you can I'm do doing it. better. You can do it. It's not going to take me three years to get to this, but it's going to take me a minute. Um, you know, I want to use the last few minutes to talk about shortages mm-hmm. uh, briefly, just briefly. We'll probably do an episode on this again, but um, they're forecasting seed shortages again this mm-hmm. year. Um, you know, because what's happened is there's a lot of companies that just can't, you know, smaller companies that just can't produce seeds at a large level yeah. to meet the demand. And then canning. So, um, you know, same thing. I, in my area, they, I know that I went into Lowe's one day and they had um, pallets of cans that they had got in jars mm-hmm. that they got in. And um, they're all still there. So I think that the craze kind of came and went, but I think the craze will come back. Mm-hmm. So, as the good gardeners that we all are, everybody listening, Go get your supplies as early as you can so you don't have to freaking worry yeah. about it. So when 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 COVID-20 comes out or COVID-21, you're good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't wait till the last minute to do that stuff. So. Yeah. But also remember, because this was the balance, um, and I think this is just a general recommendation, buy what you believe you're going to use, right? Um, so I don't always follow that. Um, no, let me, let no, me finish, no, no. let me finish my thought. Right. Okay. So I'm going to jump down. Uh, your I'm throat. telling you, <laughs> <laughs> I got fired my up note quick. came quickly because he was shaking his head as the words were coming out of my mouth. Right. <laughs> uh, so, so my goal was to have enough canning supplies for, to finish off this season and to take me mm-hmm. into complete next season. Right. Yes. You know, so I'm basically planning for two seasons right and it's still risky because i could be in a position where if there's a shortage next year i won't have be able to purchase for the following year but at this point i'm i'm saying this is where i am that's why i was focused on lids because the jars are the jars if you take care of them there are no chips and cracks you'll continue to use those over and over but this is the key finishing my thought i was in jewel today so i found them in pockets of places i found them i've previously bought them at aldi's for those that have an Aldi's near them. Um, and the 2015 ones that I have were from Aldi's. And we're talking a price of like $9.99 for quart, 12 quart size. So that's kind of your balance of what the prices are now compared to the lowest I've seen them, right? Um, 2015. Everything that I've bought, I've bought. Um, I've gotten some at my local grocery store, Jewel Osco, which is a part of the Albertsons brand, which you may have some of those stores near you guys. Um, I've bought some at Select Walmart. 
Not every mm-hmm. store. A lot of stores have been sold out. Um, I checked Myers, which is another grocery store chain, sold out. I've gotten some, actually ordered some online from Target, right? So to Ben's point, like they're, they are in some places, but based on this information from Mr. Ball, right? You know, specifically for lids, um, I was in the grocery store this morning. So now every time I go somewhere, I look for them. Key. That's the yeah. key. Every time you go to the grocery store, just take this walk by the aisle. I looked and they had a whole uh, stack of lids for regular mouth size, right? That's the majority of what I'm using. And the manufacturer's date, 2010. No way. 10 years old. Swear to you. 10 years old. How is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. This is at a regular mainstream grocery store. You know, and so I was saying, where do they get lids that are 10 years old? I I don't know. I don't know if this is like literally I don't know enough about the grocery store business to know how inventory flips. I know that generally we've learned like over the course of this year, it's like three days worth of fresh food are on the shelves, yada, yada, yada. Um, But I looked, I double checked the manufacturer's data is 2010 at a regular store. I'd be concerned about purchasing something like that online, not knowing what the manufacturer's date, possibly getting something that's super old like that. I was shocked. So when I came home, I said, maybe I'm getting this date wrong. Right. And I checked the ones I had. And for sure, they were manufactured in 2019. Again, the ones that I have from 2015. I'm just like, this is like the equivalent of like um, spoiled meat. You know, <laughs> like uh, yeah. so, yeah, I, I said all that to say this morning as of this recording this morning I saw this and there were probably 20 of them and I looked and I said because if there were if they were current if they were thought to be current I would have just put them in before the question to Mr. Ball I wouldn't have even asked I would have said jackpot you know um so I said that to say for whatever reason something happened some years back like some trigger hit there's not a prepackaged piece of anything that I put in my cart without checking the expiration date in any of my grocery shopping. I'm always checking that. And clearly this is one more thing that you're always check. I'm always checking now. So, you know. Yeah. I'm looking on Amazon right now and they have lids. How much do they have them for? Um, I'm trying to make sure nine or twelve dollars for no. a package of twelve. Cause I've been checking Amazon no, no. too. Okay, so these are not um, okay. So they look like ball uh-huh. lids, and then somebody asks, "Are they ball j- for ball jar? Ball or are they ball brand?" Uh-huh. No, they're not. I spoke to the ball office today after I did not receive my lids, and the tracking showed China. They told me they're that there are counterfeits out there, and they will never ship from China. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. these are counterfeit. I don't know what that means, but they're twenty five dollars for forty eight. So the lids that I've purchased recently this year have are anywhere between in Chicago, right? Urban area, anywhere between like 270 and 325. And that sounds about right. Like I feel like the lids, the replacement lids that I've been able to purchase in previous years, like again, I purchased some last year. I felt like they were probably closer to like $2. Um, but mm-hmm. if I got 12 for $3, let's just say that, how much did you say that was, that was for the phony ones? Uh, 25 bucks for 48. So that's six twenty five per dozen. Yeah. So 48 and- is four dozen. Like, I mean, and ball currently on Amazon does not have any available. I had them in my cart a couple of times and um, and it has the ball label and everything. And I just said I didn't feel great about it because I wanted to go back to say, right, this seems like an expensive price. And every time I would come back a day or two later, they would be gone, sold out or whatever. And then I realized I started looking at like some old receipts of mine, because if they're not in the store, sometimes they don't even have them assigned for them. So you don't even have a gauge to say how much they cost. And again, being a new canner, I can't go back to say, I remember when they were 10 cents for a dozen. Like I can't do that. Yeah. right? Um, but I think that's also a balance of of just like I mean this is for gardeners this is like hand sanitizer you know what I'm saying like there's some price yeah, gouging I mean, going important. on clearly like, I mean what are you going to do when you get 400 tomatoes you know what are you going to do are you going to freeze them well there actually is I have a really nice recipe and I'll decide whether or not it's um, 
if the audience has been good enough to us to share it because it is golden i made our this, audience is the best audience yeah well i mean this is like royalty like the queen of england if she takes me in, I'll give her this recipe. And it's not even mine. So that's the funnier part. You better be careful. You're building this shit yeah, up. Yeah, I'll hard, tell you, girl. right? So it was so, it's a, um, a roasted tomato sauce. And it's, there's, I actually have a recipe in my canning book for roasted tomato sauce that you can can. Um, but this recipe doesn't call for canning. So I'm freezing it. Now, you know, you have the whole idea of the shelf life or, you know, freezing stuff. But it was so good the first night that I made it after a long day of, you know, preserving different things. I got to the point where I put it in the containers I planned on storing it in. And I still had some in the food processor. I stopped, got some frozen garlic bread out of the freezer, put it in the oven, clean the food processor with the bread. That's how freaking good it is. Damn, that sounds good. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's. So do you, Mason official? So there are two um, brands that I've seen for, um, for, I think it's Anchor. That's Walmart brand. Yeah, I think it's Anchor and I think it is um, Ball are the only two brands that I've seen that seem to be legit. And this is previous to this year. Well, you know they're called Mason Jars. Yeah, I do realize that. So here's a Mason official website. And I don't know what that means. I'm not, don't just buy because I said Mm -hmm. this. But they have 144 lids for $58 on their website. So you can start doing some math. 148 lids. 144 lids for 58 bucks. So that's 12 times 12. Uh, 50. That actually seems like a pretty good price. That's 483. Quick math. That's not in my head, folks. Yeah. Um, so that's still so, more expensive than what I'm paying for them here, but it's definitely not the price that you see. That's 250% more than I paid for them two years ago. But the key here is this is where it gets tricky, right? We don't know what the going price for the stuff is going to be when it becomes available next year. Right. You know, so. Or if it is. Yeah. So I, um, the shelving unit. I wouldn't order online. I would just go to stores, yeah, to I, be it's, honest. It's cause, worth the drive, especially now knowing what Mr. Ball said about the lead expiration date. And that's serious that business. Counterf- you know. That counterfeit shit is serious. Yeah. Like, you get something. And I mean, I look, it looks like a ball. I mean, you'd have to look at the package. It probably says, like, B A L L and then like a really small S balls lid. If it even says that, a picture, an image online, it could be different than what you're shipped. I did buy um, the complete set from Target, right? You know the ideas, and I actually went through before we started podcast uh, this podcast episode. I was like going all over the house, collecting all of my (laughs) my jars and shit, right? Like looking at the date on them, and luckily everything that I purchased this year has been from 2019 so the only thing that i have that's question and i've only bought i bought it from target online everything else i've bought in stores and those were different they didn't have like the large quart sizes at target um yeah and they were from in my money ten dollars eleven at the top is what i'm going to pay for a case of jars um, if it's a smaller size, I've seen it as low in my area as eight bucks. And that pricing is pretty consistent with what I paid back in, you know, when I first started buying jars three, three, four years ago. Um, so anywho, I mean, I think the idea is, while this isn't about, you know, indoor greenhouses, it's obviously gardening related as we close out this oh, year, yeah. as we think about next year, um, uh, make sure just like any of your other purchases, yeah, it's a stand up kind of business, right? You know, if you have an issue with what you get, you have some recourse, you know. Right. Well, the last okay, so first of all, this subject's starting to give me a panic attack. Yeah. yeah. So um I'm gonna say something and then we gotta close mm-hmm. out because it's it makes me nervous. Mm-hmm. Um have you ever heard of the app Ibotta? I B O T T A. No, I haven't. So it's this app you can get and basically what it is, look, they probably take your information and they sell it and that's how this works. But you go on there and you say, okay, this is the grocery store I go to. And then they have all these products. And within these products, you get rebates for buying mm-hmm. it. It's like a digital coupon. And then so, you know, and then when you get a certain amount, I think it's like every 20 bucks you get and rebates, you can get like a gift card to wherever you mm-hmm. want, stuff like this. You know, a lot of times we'll do Amazon or the same grocery store. 
Well, I know last year they had um, jars on there for if you buy a pack of 12 jars, you get a $5 rebate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Bro, man, stocked up on some jars, if you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, And the benefit of that, though, is you also get 10 lids or 12 mm-hmm. lids because the, the jars mm-hmm. come with lids. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a, I mean, that's a, an important thing. But um, anyways, that's that. We're good. Check your manu- manufacturer's date. That's what I got. <laughs> check, yeah, check your manufacturer's date, and just every time you go to the store, take get it on a lookout, and don't hesitate. You know, don't wait for March to buy your seeds because you will be up due to mm-hmm. creek without a paddle. Mm-hmm. You're going to be using your hands. You're not going to have what you yeah. need. So, yeah. you know, and if you've got stuff growing now, you know, if you're lucky enough and you live in a, a more southern zone, let it go to seed, and you'll have the seed for next year. You know. So, you know, anytime you can do that, I would definitely recommend Mm -hmm. starting to read up on that. Mm -hmm. Just because people, things are weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things are real weird. So, Um, but anyways, do you have anything to tell the good people? Think about indoor greenhouses. I am. And I say this all the time, but, you know, not that I don't trust young Ben here because clearly he doesn't trust me with things like roly polies and grow bags because he needs second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth opinions around it. it. You know, but I trust him. And so I believe in this indoor greenhouse. But I also would love to hear if you all are doing something like this to have done it or plan on doing it. So hit us up on Instagram under, you know, Backyard Gardens Pod. Let us know. Hashtag BYG podcast. Um, Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm curious because I, you know, maybe I wanted someone to take the plunge with me. Is it a plunge? I mean, it took me yeah. four years to start cannon. I mean, come on, you, I'm slow to stuff. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> it's a dive. It's a dive. <laughs> yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. And I mean, if you got any questions, hit us up so we can, uh, for our listener questions portion, I believe I forgot to pull one today. So, uh, I apologize for that, but hit us up on backyard gardens pod. Um, Hit us up on YouTube at Backyard Gardens. I'm going to be doing a vlog series about my greenhouse. And booyah. Sorry for the eardrums. Not too late in the episode for the bill. (laughs) Not too late. Not too late. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be chronicling everything about it. From building to growing to what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, which is probably going to be a lot. But um first episode is up which is just me kind of explaining what i'm gonna do and batavia is gonna have an episode coming out on backyard gardens about frost protection Mm -hmm. so uh we love you guys wear a mask be safe wash your hands and stay out of trouble get in the garden keep digging keep working and uh, until next time we'll catch you guys later see ya Thank you for listening to us today. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Backyard Gardens Pod. And we share gardening tips and clips from the show. And we would love to see your gardens and share them with everybody. So if you want to join us and you want to share your gardens, feel free to use the hashtag BYG podcast. And if you want to see us on video, you can find us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens, where we have the full show and clips and all the recipes broken down for you. And until next time, Learn to grow and grow for change, and we're going to call it a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.